China just launched its third batch of Guang satellites, another bold step toward building a 13,000-strong megaconstellation that could rival Starlink and redefine global internet access. This isn't just another space launch, it's a strategic play to dominate low-Earth orbit communications and shift the power balance in space. In this video, we're diving into what was launched and how this could change everything from rural connectivity to geopolitics. China's Guang Constellation, or meaning National Network, is not just another space project. Beijing's answer to the global dominance of satellite internet was spearheaded by SpaceX's Starlink. But unlike many Western endeavors, Guang is not privately funded or transparent. It is orchestrated by the Chinese state, through China's satellite network group company, Limited, China SatNet, a government-owned entity created in April 2021 with a very clear mission, establish China's digital infrastructure in space. The plan? Deploy 13,000 satellites into low-Earth orbit, LEO, by 2032, half of which must be in place by 2027 to meet ITU, International Telecommunication Union, filing requirements. For comparison, giving it a significant lead, but if China maintains its current cadence, already hitting 23 launches in just the first four months of 2025, it could rapidly close the gap. What's at stake here isn't just global internet access. It's control over the pipelines of information. Guang is designed to offer high-speed, low-latency global internet, focusing on areas that are traditionally underserved by fiber or 5G infrastructure. However, with China's track record of blending civilian technology with military strategy, experts are raising alarms about the potential dual-use nature of the constellation. This isn't mere speculation. Satellite megaconstellations can support military communications, surveillance, and intelligence gathering. And in a world increasingly reliant on real-time data and AI-powered systems, whoever owns the sky could soon dominate both the digital and physical domains. There's also a global branding strategy at play. By offering internet access to developing countries, especially those within China's Belt and Road Initiative, Guang could become an extension of China's soft power diplomacy. Its infrastructure diplomacy, repackaged for orbit. What's more, Guang operates under a veil of secrecy. Unlike Starlink or Amazon's Kuiper, there are no public user terminals, service pricing, or detailed technical papers. The Shanghai-led Xianfan, Thousand Sales, Constellation has released more data than Guang, and that says a lot. What was deployed and why it matters. On April 28, 2025, at precisely 4, 10 p.m. Eastern, 2010 Universal Time Coordinated, China took another giant leap in its space race. A Long March 5B rocket, one of the most powerful vehicles in China's fleet, lifted off from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center on Hainan Island. Hidden within the fog and smoke of its massive propulsion was the third batch of Guang satellites, known internally as Group 03. Unlike the previous batch launched in February using the smaller Long March 8A, this mission was designed to carry more mass, likely 10 large satellites, according to the symbolism in the mission patch from the Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology, SAST. Each star on the patch typically represents a satellite, and this launch featured 10. The satellites were injected into a near-polar orbit using the Yuanzhong 2 YZ-2 upper stage, which enables multiple precise orbital insertions. That detail matters. Previous launches of the Long March 5B raised concerns globally due to uncontrolled re-entries of the core stage, but this time, the YZ-2 handled the upper stage deployment, meaning the main booster will not reach orbit. A welcome move towards safer space operations. According to tracking data from the U.S. Space Force, 19 Guang satellites from the first two launches have been confirmed in orbit. If this third batch delivered another 10, the total rises to 29 operational satellites, still far from the target of 13,000, but the pace is clearly accelerating. The payloads for this launch are believed to be large platform communication satellites developed by the China Academy of Space Technology, CAST. CAST has previously confirmed two platform types, large and small, for Guang, although it hasn't disclosed technical specifications like power, bandwidth, or beam footprint. The large satellite platforms deployed here are likely capable of more complex routing, beam steering, and possibly inter-satellite laser links. 
Importantly, this launch also contributes to China's ambitious goal of conducting around 100 orbital launches in 2025, a number it failed to reach in 2024 but is now back on track for. In the same week as the Guang launch, China also sent up Shenzhou-20 and a Tianlian-2 relay satellite, showing just how packed their space calendar has become. The Guang mega constellation doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's entering an already tense and crowded low Earth orbit, where global players are rapidly carving out territory, not with borders, but with beams, bandwidths, and orbital slots. So, what happens when one of the world's most powerful nations plans to drop 13,000 satellites into orbit? First, there's the geopolitical disruption. Starlink has already proven the impact of satellite internet on conflicts, notably in Ukraine, with thousands of small, resilient satellites providing encrypted internet. Governments have a new tool to bypass terrestrial communication blackouts. China, watching closely, is building its version, not just as an alternative to Starlink, but as a counterweight. Second, there's the military edge. Though China insists Guang is a civilian system, the dual-use nature of satellites cannot be ignored. High-bandwidth constellations can support real-time drone coordination, encrypted communications, and surveillance data transmission, all vital in modern warfare. With such a large number of satellites, Guang could offer continuous coverage over any point on Earth, a key advantage for military operations. Then comes the issue of space congestion. Thousands of satellites increase the risk of collisions, especially in LEO, which is already populated by Starlink, OneWeb. More satellites also mean more radio frequency interference. There's already tension between operators over spectrum allocations. Guowang's global footprint could lead to interference with existing services or conflict over ground station rights in other countries. Lastly, there's the transparency problem. Guowang has released minimal public information, even compared to China's Qianfan constellation. This opacity creates uncertainty, and in international politics, uncertainty breeds suspicion. Western agencies worry about covert military payloads or data collection strategies masked as internet service. All this raises a central question. How should the world respond? Some suggest the answer lies in multilateral regulation, similar to maritime or aviation treaties. Others argue for public-private alliances, like NATO leveraging Starlink or building its sovereign constellations. One thing is certain, ignoring Guang is not an option. China's third Guang launch isn't just another space milestone. It's a signal flare for a new era of global competition in low Earth orbit. With 13,000 satellites planned, China isn't just aiming to connect the world, it's positioning itself to control the digital sky. This constellation blends innovation with strategy, power with precision. But it also raises urgent questions. Who manages space? Who sets the rules? And who benefits? One thing's clear, the race for orbital dominance is accelerating, and Guang just cranked up the throttle. The skies are changing, and with them, the balance of power. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.